Hello, I'm Alan Payne. I've been a member of Cancer United for eight months, and this is my story. My life before the cancer diagnosis was pretty good, really. Um, used to get up for work every day, uh, uh, see the grandchildren, do stuff like that. And um, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty normal. Go to the pub, you know, friends over at the weekend for drinks and stuff, and really just, you know, enjoying life. And then um, I found that I, um, some mornings I would sort of like be um, spitting blood and something, what was that? Or my throat would be a bit sore. And um, so what we'd done, we thought we'd go to the doctor and she noticed I had two lumps come up there. So she said, I'm going to send you to the hospital, ear, nose and throat. So we went in the beginning of November of 2022. And um, I didn't really think nothing of it. They had a feel about and stuff and the, the, the normal gear that they do, the looking down your throat and the camera up the nose. And they... Um, he said, I'd like to send you for a biopsy. And nothing dawned on me, you know, biopsy. I thought, oh, okay. Um, I got it through within a week. I had to go to Chichester, went and had that done. Um, then I had an appointment on the 20th, 23rd of December. And we've gone to, the, gone to there, like, you know, like you do, go in there. And then he said, do you remember anything about what we spoke about last time? I said, yeah, that you'd sent me for a biopsy. Um, you might need to stick a camera down the throat and like later on to see. He goes, well, I'm sorry to tell you, you've got um, tongue cancer. Once he had said them words, you, you know, they just everything just went like blank, basically. And I remember there's a few tears because you think, oh, you know, is this it? And then when we could like got out of there and went to see the nurse and she told you the different things that could happen, when we got home, we thought it was quite the journey home was quite silent. Um, or we had to pop into some friends to drop some presents off for the girls, for the two little girls. And I remember telling them, and I still didn't believe it. I thought, hold on, what are they? the words coming out of my mouth didn't weren't the words I wanted to say, basically. Yeah. And then going home and realizing the people that you got to tell, you know, to tell the, like the children. And I thought, how am I going to tell them? Um, certain family members and it was very surreal I mean saying like to try and tell the like me work as well but being it was the 23rd everybody's backing up for Christmas there was nobody and I did say to my wife Emma at the time do I do I tell people now or do we leave it but she thought no it's best to let people know so after we had told the people the relevant family and stuff I mean, Christmas came and went. It just, you know, because I was told to go and enjoy myself. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I drink can only do so much, if you know what I mean. But I didn't want to do that. Yeah. All I could think about was, I want to get this started. That was the thing. I did, really did. You know, I thought, well, the 30th of January is a mile away to me. It's years away. But I just wanted to get started on the treatment and, you know, take it from there, basically. When you get the diagnosis from the doctor, you know, I, you, <laughs> something strange. I felt sorry for him because he had to tell somebody that they got cancer. And you think, crikey, oh, they, one of the things I did think was, crikey, I wouldn't want his job. But after I sort of, once it hit me, as, as I said, I went numb. I just thought, right, hold on. You know, and I thought, well, what do I ask now? And I remember looking at the wife and then I said, well, are you going to operate? I mean, that was my first, you know, I thought. And he said, no, no, we don't need to do that. He said, the first thing is, this is treatable. And, and he explained what was going to go on. But you still have that feeling of, oh, how long have I got? Which you do. It's, it's, hearing the words cancer is not a nice thing, but it's not the horrible death sentence that people imagine when they get told that. I mean, you know, it, it was so frightening. I must admit, I was frightened, don't admit that, and, you know. 
I'm not scared to admit it. I did have, I did cry, which is you, you do because you think, oh God, you you think about your children, your grandchildren, what you're going to miss. But then, them words that he said that this is treatable, then you know you think, right, I want to fight this. This isn't this isn't the end. This ain't how I'm going out. Mm. And you do, you just something clicked in, and you you know I couldn't wait for the treatment to start. To be quite honest with you. I don't know, it might sound a bit weird, but it was just, you know, I thought roll on the 30th of January, you know. I just felt that that lull between the December and January, I thought, well, oh, is it going to get worse? You know, there's all these thoughts that go through your head. And, you, you know, and you do, there was like your private time, what I would call your, your private time, when the wife, bless her, she would be sort of like working from home, but you're on your own and you're thinking, what do I do? How do I do this? What do I, you know, what do we need to get into place? Do I, you know, have we got policies, <laughs> insurance policies, you know, that sort of thing. Once we had finished with the nurse, they, like, with, she said that, don't worry. She goes, the questions that you're probably asking yourself and that you, how you feel and stuff. She goes, look, Macmillan will be in touch with you. And, they, they were, the, the, I think it was the day after Boxing Day. I got a phone call from them and the stuff that this Claire uh, was telling me about how to, how, um, you know, just different things, benefits that, you know, <laughs> that we, you can claim and stuff. Um, counseling, she got me a counsellor um, that was really good. I had the counselling for, it was about eight weeks and it was really good. I mean, they were fantastic. So questions that I needed that were how you felt was there for you. There was always an answer. She said, you needed an answer to something, just pick up the phone. And that's how I found that I got through bits like that, even down to the treatment. I thought, well, how am I going to get to the hospital every day? My wife's got to work. She can't do like a month of taking me backwards and forwards. They got like hospital cars sorted out and all the timings and stuff, which is really good. And that's how I found out about Cancer United at the end, towards the end of my treatment. So once the treatment started, I had chemo for five weeks and the nurse there was, she was lovely, done all the, you know, get trying to find the needle marks is good fun. And, you know, cause obviously she said, drink plenty of water to help you, you know, get the veins up. Um, then I had the, um, after, after I was doing the uh, chemo, I had the radiation therapy to have 30 days of that. We had, to, had a day at Brighton Hospital Cancer Centre, and it does take a day because of all the stuff that they got to talk you through, the mask fitting, that was fun. I don't know if I'm laughing about it, because they asked me, did I want to keep it at the end? I thought, no, thank you. <laughs> no, that's all right. Because some people hung them up in their gardens. I don't know, scared of birds, I think. But that was... Well, I say fun, but they, they were good. They had to like fit the mask. And then they, they done this little, that little bit here, because um, obviously that's where they, when they line you up in the radiotherapy department. Um, I had to speak to a speech therapist to help with swallowing. Um, uh, that was, oh, the dentist, that was fun. I was more annoyed that I had to have a tooth taken out because I had a deep root filling, but they said, well, obviously that's got to come out. But that was done at Brighton Hospital, fantastic. All, that was all sorted. Um, as the treatment went on, you you sort of like, I felt great. First couple of weeks, you thought, oh, this is easy. This is brilliant. I'm all right on this. But then suddenly things do take a turn because obviously you have your throat here where you're, you're getting the radiotherapy. You they get you had to put special cream on, like I think it was arnica oil, I think they call it, or and stuff you had to put on. So we was doing that. Special throat sprays because you found that you was getting mouth ulcers and stuff. And then suddenly the the horriblest thing ever, your taste goes. And then suddenly food is just you know, and you think, Frankie, I can't taste this. But one of the nurses at the um chemo centre said to us, uh, do you like spaghetti? So I said, oh, yeah. So she goes, we'll just eat that because that's bland. So that's what I started doing. I started having that, um, pot noodles and, and gear, you know, anything that was easy to swallow. But in the end, I had to have, or just as just before I started the treatment, sorry, I had to have a feeding tube. 
but that was to help with the tablets and stuff because I couldn't swallow tablets so I had to have it in liquid form and that was quite a palaver getting the tablets I needed but that was all done um, and the nurse used to come around as well once a week to check on the tube and stuff so I had that in and then I started to get towards the end of the treatment I would say the last two weeks was the worst but there's got to be highs and lows with whatever treatment you have i think I think the overwhelming thing about it is all the stuff that you you go through it's the emotions that that really hit you because one day you're fine you know or you might be fine for a couple of days but then another day you might feel down but you can't help that it's something it's it's part of the journey that you go on it would be i think about Two, three weeks after I had got the, the like to say, all clear or the remission, whatever they like to call it. I mean, when they said it's gone. But I remember saying to Claire, uh, the Macmillan lady, that I said, but, oh, you know, I do get tired really quick. I can't go for walks like we had done, even though we was going out and getting some air. I couldn't. So she goes, right. She goes, we've got, there's a gym that you can go to as she put it, at Cancer United, you heard of them? I said, no. She goes, right, well, it's in Angering, not far from where you live. I'll, we'll set you up with an interview there. And she goes, you can go there. So I thought, brilliant, okay. Well, within a couple of hours, um, a lady rung me and set me up with an interview with um, Dwayne, uh, the uh, trainer there. So I remember coming um, to the Cancer United place at Angering, um, we got there, my wife came with me, went upstairs, met Dwayne and Eaton and then asked me, like, you know, how have you been feeling, you know, and like stuff. And I said, well, you know, I was angry, upset, you know, like, this has happened to me because, you know, shouldn't happen to me. Like, they said, well, you know, you feel that way. You think, why is it happening to me? What have I done? But, it, you know, cancer doesn't discriminate against anybody, I'm afraid. It's anybody can get it, so... And he said, no, that's understandable. But he said, what am I looking f to get out of the, you know, the training and stuff that they do? And I said, to be fitter again, to fit, to be that Alan that I was a year ago, where I used to go out and do stuff, you know, kick a ball about and, you know, just, just being me. The impact that the treatment had on you, you you're very tired. Um, you'd sort of, the walking, like we used to go out for a walk, quite a lot but they got less and less because I couldn't go as far um, like you know we, we'd say like walk to the beach and back which is like a 10 20 minute walk and but you know I couldn't do that um, very you were sleeping a lot I, I must admit I was sleeping a lot and it does make it does make you feel down because you think you can't see or I couldn't that well, you think, crikey, when's this ever going to end? Am I ever going to be that active as I was again, as I used to be, sorry? But it just, you know, once I'd done, started, um, learned about Cancer United and started doing the, 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 the training there, I'm starting to, I get in there now, I'm getting that bit where I'm actually looking forward to the exercise. <laughs> Which is a bit, you know, my wife can't believe it. She thinks, well, you, you know, you, you're looking forward to your training. Like, yeah, because it has helped. It, it really has. You know, um, the people there have been brilliant. As I say, you've got, you got Dwayne, uh, who's a fantastic trainer, and Sean. Um, you've got Sarah downstairs, you know, anything, you know, that, that you need help with and stuff. She can speak to her. It's just been brilliant. And as for Jan, I mean, it's just such a brilliant thing to do for people you know and I just want to get the, the, across the people out there that you know with all that you go through that you've got a place like Cancer United that are there to help you and they which they've done and especially for my mental health as well it's it's been brilliant you know where you sit indoors feeling you know low a bit sorry for yourself there ain't you go to you go to a place like Cancer United and there there's people there from all walks of life that are, are going through it, been through it, you know what I mean? And they've all got a story to tell. And it is, you know, and they are great. It's great to have a laugh with them. It, it's fun, I find it. So, you know, with, when you're going through 
different things in life, not only just the cancer. I mean, I had other stuff going on, but it, but mentally it drains you. you. You do feel, you get your days where you don't want to be talked to. You, you think, oh, you know, that's it. You know, I've gone through all that. Nothing's, nothing's happened on, you know, you just, you sort of, the feeling's so low that there's, you, you, you can't, you, you're in such a hole that you don't think you can get out. And it is, it's horrible. I mean, I hated that. My wife, bless her, you know, she see me going through it. See, it, it, it takes a toll on, on your loved ones as well, you know. I'll be honest with you, I never had any horrible thoughts, you know, like, which is one of the things that counsellors ask you. You know, oh, have you ever had, like, suicide? Well, no, no, not at all. Because all that does is, yeah, it may put you out of your misery, but it's all the people you leave behind that you've created misery for. You know, you know, I don't think like that. So, but it was just that, you know, you do come to a low ebb where, you know, you get, it's like tearful. That's, you know, you know, I'm, you know, how can you put it? I'm a man, you know, you don't go through things like that, but you do. And I feel that one of the things that I personally would like to get across is don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask for it, because the thing is, there's people out there that can help you, and it does, it works. Don't sit there thinking, this is it, I can't do nothing, you know, that's the end. It isn't, not at all. If it wasn't for the fact that Cancer United are there, um, it's, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd be a lot, of, be in a worse state than I am now, I must admit, because they've they've done wonders for us, and I think that this is something that should be nationwide, definitely. I totally agree with that, and there's a lot of people out there that it could really help. You know, they haven't got to feel that they're alone. You're not. You don't just fall off the end of the world and once they say, "Oh, right, you've had your treatment, and that's enough. Then goodbye." No, there's not. When you've got places like Cancer United that are there to help, you know, for your mental health and stuff, it's brilliant. I couldn't have do, couldn't do without them, to be quite honest with you. And the good thing is, even though you're over your treatment and stuff, it doesn't stop there. You carry on. They've got other things that they do. They've got a choir. They've got walking football. There's loads of things that they do, quiz nights, and, and it's brilliant. It's like a big family. With the mental, mental health side of doing the physical exercise is absolutely great. It, it has really helped me, you know, a lot. And I mean, if the wife was sitting here, she'd tell you that. But it's the, the meeting other people that, as I said earlier, that have going through it, been through it, and they, they, they sort of, how can you put it? They make you feel part of something where when I was going through the stuff and, you know, like even you could say my work, but they just didn't really, you know, okay, oh, you've got cancer and all this, you know, okay, that's nothing. You know, I would say that's nothing, not to them it isn't, but they, um, how can you put it, with the, the, the people that you meet there, it is brilliant. They've, they make you feel, I look forward on a Monday when I leave there, I look forward to Thursday going back. Or, you know, we've got a, um, a sponsored uh, walk and run coming up in September, which I'm proud to say that I'm doing, my wife's doing, my daughter and her boyfriend are doing the run. So, which is great, the stuff that they do like that. And, you know, it's stuff that you look forward to. And that's how I think it's helped my mental well-being. Because, it, it, you know, before Cancer Night, I was... You know, I just, I was down in the dumps. I would, you know, honestly, I really was. You know, and it was, you know, I was irritable, um, you know, unapproachable, the wife would say. But, you know, you just, it's just how it takes you. You get, you get tearful. Just really horrible. I was in a horrible place, but I'm not there now, which is really good. And that's been through the Help of Cancer Unite and, and all the people there. I've learned that through places like uh, Cancer Unite and Macmillan, and even reading, to be quite honest with you, um, uh, self-help books of um, Ant Middleton, the SAS bloke, where there is a side that you, you can pull yourself out of it. And I'm one of the lucky ones that I'm, I'm on that recovery. I wouldn't say I'm fully recovered yet, but I'm getting there. And 
as I said, all the time I've got places like Kansas United to go to. Um, I know I'm going to get there. I'm going to get back to the Allen that used to be, you know, having a laugh and a joke and you know, <laughs> just being me.